Newly declassified and released documents directly implicate Joe Biden in the ongoing Obamagate scandal, a story that is so complicated it spans back years and dozens of individuals and is, is very difficult to explain to you unless you've been following these stories. But I'll do my best to give you a basic breakdown, citing a National Review story with a brief overview. But when it, go, when it comes to Joe Biden, one way to look at how serious this is comes from Senator Rand Paul, who said, Vice President Biden is guilty of using government to go after a political opponent. This is what Donald Trump was accused of doing with Russiagate. And now we've seen a document that shows on the same day the Washington Post released the name of Michael Flynn in reference to a phone call with the Russian ambassador. Joe Biden made a request to have his name unmasked. Again, very complicated as to what this means. But the Michael Flynn investigation shows at the very least the FBI was seeking to jam up Donald Trump's administration. Does this go all the way up to to Barack Obama? It actually might. Notes that were released show the FBI was seeking to get Michael Flynn fired. They were trying to get him to lie, citing the Logan Act, a, a, a law that's never been enforced. And one of their goals was potentially to get a man fired. And there is no law enforcement basis for trying to get someone's job unless you're just trying to go after the incoming administration. We learned recently the FBI was going to close the investigation on Michael Flynn until one agent intervened. A day later, Barack Obama himself and Joe Biden had a meeting where they discussed Michael Flynn. So this story is, again, extremely complicated. But as far as it pertains to Biden, Rand Paul is he's going as hard as he can. So let's break this down. I'll start with the breaking news about the statement made by Rand Paul. And then I want to give you a basic overview of Obamagate and what this really means. And boy, is there a lot to go over. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are many ways you can give, but the best thing you can do is share this video. The mainstream media is getting propped up on YouTube. The algorithm favors these major networks like CNN, and many of these networks don't actually cover this. They haven't much to the non-surprise of many people who actually been following this story, because for the most part, it makes Barack Obama look bad. But as we can see from the New York Post, they say it looks like President Obama ordered up a phony Russia gate scandal. The National Review carried by Yahoo News, Obamagate is not a conspiracy theory. So why aren't these major networks carrying this? I don't know. But by helping sharing this video, it's the most one of the most powerful things you can do to support the channel. And if you just want to watch, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and hopefully that'll be enough to get YouTube to actually recommend my videos. Real Clear Politics reports. Speaking to members of the press, Rand Paul said he wanted testimony from the officials on the list, including James Comey and James Clapper. This is the list of people who sought to unmask Michael Flynn. He said, these rumors have been going around for years that Obama's administration was abusing the power of unmasking. And this sounds like they were using it to go after a political opponent, which is a serious offense and should be investigated. The fact that Vice President Biden is directly involved in the unmasking of a political opponent. Think about it. You remember impeachment. They said the president was using the government to go after a political opponent. This is Vice President Biden using the spying powers of the U.S. to go after a political opponent. And he is caught red handed here, eavesdropping on a political opponent's phone calls. Every reporter in the country needs to ask this legitimate question. They need to come out of hibernation and ask Vice President Biden, do we think it is a legitimate function of government to eavesdrop on political opponents, illegally unmask them and listen to their private conversations? In documents published by Catherine Herridge of CBS, we can see that on January 12th, Vice President Biden of the U.S. sought to unmask the name of Michael Flynn. This basically means that as the U.S. was spying on a foreign individual, There was an American that they didn't and they didn't know the name of this American because the reports don't give the name. We have Fourth Amendment rights. We have a right to privacy. Well, Joe Biden asked that this person be unmasked, and he presumably got that name. On the same day, The Washington Post published an opinion piece which revealed the name of Michael Flynn and basically put the story out there that Flynn had been communicating with the Russians. Now, it's hard to know if Barack Obama was the person who gave the name to this writer, because it happened on the same day, you need to know what time the story was published. And even then, you're still speculating. I actually think based on some information, it stands to reason Barack, uh, Joe Biden isn't the person who leaked the information. But why then was he seeking to unmask Michael Flynn? We don't know. But I can say they accused Donald Trump of trying to use his powers to dig up dirt on Joe Biden. Well, at the very least, Senator Rand Paul and anyone else could argue that Joe Biden was doing the same thing. 
Now, some might argue there's no way Joe Biden could have known that this would have benefited him. Well, when it came to Ukraine gate, Joe Biden wasn't the presumptive nominee. I actually didn't think he was going to win. He was doing really poorly. But everyone was so convinced. They said Donald Trump had the foresight back in, you know, 2018 or 27. Yeah, I believe it was 2017, 2018. I'm not sure which year to actually try and dig up dirt on Biden, presuming he would run against him. I think that's silly. But that's the argument they wanted to make, that Donald Trump years in advance presumed Biden would run against him, so he sought to dig up dirt. Okay, I'll make the same assumption or I'll ask the same question. I can then say Joe Biden knew he was planning on running for president, so he, he was doing what he could to dig up dirt on a political opponent. We don't know for sure. We don't know why these people were seeking to unmask Michael Flynn, but we do know that on January 5th, Obama's chief of staff also made this request. That same day, Obama and Biden had a meeting where they talked about Michael Flynn and they discussed the Logan Act. This is very, very strange. And perhaps we would need an actual investigation into what's going on. But let me give you a basic rundown because many of you are probably, you know, I assume there's many people who don't know what Obamagate is. Reporters certainly aren't going to do the investigating and tell you. But we have this story from the National Review. Obamagate is not a conspiracy theory. That gives a basic overview. So we'll read this and then we'll carry on with what's going on with Obama and Biden. uh, Daryl Harsanel writes, those sharing the Obamagate hashtags on Twitter would do best to avoid the hysterics we saw from the Russia collusion believers, Russia collusion believers. But they have no reason to ignore the mounting evidence that suggests the Obama administration engaged in serious corruption. Democrats and their allies who like to pretend that President Obama's only scandalous act was wearing a tan suit are going to spend the next few months gaslighting the public by focusing on the most feverish accusations against Obama. But the fact is, we already have more compelling evidence that the Obama administration engaged in misconduct than we ever did for opening the Russia collusion investigation. He says, it is not conspiracy mongering to note that the investigation into Trump was predicated on an opposition research document filled with fabulism and most likely Russian disinformation. We know the DOJ withheld contradictory evidence when it began spying on those in Trump's orbit. We have proof that many of the relevant FISA warrant applications, almost every one of them, actually were based off of based on fabricated evidence or riddled with errors. We know that members of the Obama administration who had no genuine role in the counterintelligence in counterintelligence operations repeatedly unmasked Trump's allies. And we now know that despite a dearth of evidence, The FBI railroaded Michael Flynn into a guilty plea so it could keep the investigation going. What's more, the larger context only makes all of these facts more damning. By 2016, the Obama administration's intelligence community had normalized domestic spying. Obama's director of national intelligence, James Clapper, famously lied about snooping on American citizens to Congress. His CIA director, John Brennan, oversaw an agency that felt comfortable spying on the Senate with at least five of his underlings breaking into congressional computer files. His attorney general, Eric Holder, invoked the Espionage Act to spy on a Fox News journalist, shopping his case to three judges until he found one who let him name the reporter as a co-conspirator. The Obama administration also spied on Associated Press reporters, which the news organization called a massive and unprecedented intrusion. And though it's been long forgotten, Obama officials were caught monitoring the conversation of members of Congress who opposed the Iran nuclear deal. What what makes anyone believe these people wouldn't create a pretext to spy on the opposition party? If anyone does, they shouldn't, because on top of everything else, we know that Barack Obama was keenly interested in the Russian collusion investigations progress. In her very last hour in office, National Security Advisor Susan Rice wrote, a self-preserving email to herself, noting that she'd attended a meeting with the president, Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates, FBI Director James Comey, and Vice President Joe Biden, in which Obama stressed that everything in the investigation should proceed by the book. Did high-ranking Obama administration officials not always conduct such investigations by the book? It is curious that they would need to be specifically instructed to do so. It is also curious that the outgoing National Security Advisor, 15 minutes after Trump had been sworn in as president, would need to mention this meeting. None of this means that Obama committed some specific crime. He almost assuredly did not. In a healthy media environment, though, the mounting evidence of wrongdoing would spark an outpouring of journalistic curiosity. But you might ask, why does it matter anymore? 
Well, for one thing, many of the same characters central to all this apparent malfeasance now want to retake power in Washington. Biden is the Democratic Party's presumptive presidential nominee. He's running as the heir to Obama's legacy, and he was at the meeting with Rice. He had denied even knowing anything about the FBI investigation into Flynn before being forced to correct himself after ABC's, ABC's George Stephanopoulos pointed out that he was mentioned in Rice's emails. It's completely legitimate to wonder what he knew about the investigation. But Joe Biden tried saying he knew nothing of this investigation. And we know, according to this document, he sought to unmask Michael Flynn. Not only was he in the meeting, but a week later, he made an unmasking request. Why? And why lie about it later? But to be fair, some have said that as a private citizen, this information was classified. He couldn't state it. But I think it, that's potentially a fair point, but it doesn't matter because Joe Biden was involved in whatever it is that was going on. I want to show you some some very strange circumstances. Let me start with this story from Fox News. Biden says he was aware of Michael Flynn probe during transition. This is where he first said, quote, I know nothing about those moves to investigate Michael Flynn. If it was true that he just couldn't say this because it was classified, we had already seen the declassification of transcripts in that implicated Joe Biden saying that he was in the meeting with Obama. He had no reason to lie. He did. He was called out on it. And then he walked it back saying, no, I thought you asked whether or not I had anything to do with him being prosecuted. I'm sorry. I was aware that there was that they asked for an investigation, but that's all I know about it. I don't think anything else. Well, now we know that he made an unmasking request. But take a look at this story from Politico where the timeline gets strange. FBI docs suggest agents prepared to close Flynn case, then reversed course. On January 4th, the FBI had drafted a document summarizing findings on a probe, codenamed Crossfire Razor, of whether Flynn had been acting as a Russian agent during the 2016 campaign. The partly redacted document, which was included in the court filings, indicated the FBI had no derogatory information on Flynn and was prepared to close the case. A review of logical, da- uh, of logical databases did not yield information on which to predicate further investigative efforts. But messages later that afternoon between senior agents and FBI officials show a last minute reversal driven by discussions at the Bureau's highest levels. Hey, don't clow razor. FBI counterintelligence agent Peter Strzok wrote to an agent whose name is redacted, but is identified in the uh, conversation as the official case agent. He adds, seventh floor involved, a reference to the highest echelons of FBI leadership. A day later, we learned Obama meeting could be behind corrupt Michael Flynn probe. This from Molly Hemingway writing for the New York Post. Writing, information released in the Justice Department's motion to dismiss the case brought against General Michael Flynn confirms the significance of a January 5th meeting at the Obama White House, January 5th, 2017. It was at this meeting that Obama gave guidance to key officials who would be tasked with protecting his administration's utilization of secretly funded Clinton campaign research which alleged Donald Trump was involved in a treasonous plot to collude with Russia from being discovered or stopped by the incoming administration. President Obama said he wants to be sure that as we engage with the incoming team, we are mindful to ascertain if there uh, if there is any reason that we cannot share information fully as it relates to Russia. So here's what we know. The FBI said no derogatory information. A day later, Barack Obama's chief of staff made an unmasking request on information And then Obama said, we need to be aware. Well, let me read the quote for you. We are uh, we are mindful to ascertain if there is any reason that we cannot share information fully as it relates to Russia. This is what Susan Rice wrote in an unusual email to herself about the meeting, which was also attended by Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates. A clearer picture is emerging of the drastic steps that, that were taken to accomplish Obama's goals in the following weeks and months. Shortly thereafter, High-level operatives began intensely leaking selective information supporting a supposed Russia-Trump conspiracy theory. The incoming national security advisor was ambushed, and the incoming attorney general was forced to recuse himself from oversight of investigations of President Trump. At each major point in the operation, explosive media leaks were a key strategy in the operation to take down Trump. Now, like I mentioned, it is very, very difficult to understand it is very complicated. Many of you may already understand a lot of this, but unless you've been following all of this, it is just, it goes back years. It involves so many people. But let me just tell you, the FBI said in the fourth, they didn't find any derogatory information. 
An unmasking request was made. And then Obama said, we got to make sure we can be mindful and gave direction. We later learned due to the release of these notes from January 24th, that one of their goals was to get Michael Flynn fired. Now, this is where it all comes together. The handwritten notes written by the FBI's former head of counterintelligence, Bill Priestap, after a meeting with then FBI Director James Comey and then FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe, Fox News is told, further suggested that agents planned in the alternative to get Flynn, quote, to admit to breaking the Logan Act when he spoke to then Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak during the presidential transition period. The Logan Act is an obscure statute that has never been used in a criminal prosecution. Enacted in 1799 in an era before telephones, it was intended to prevent individuals from falsely claiming to represent the United States government abroad. What is our goal? One of the notes read, truth admission or to get him to lie so we can prosecute him or get him fired. And there it is. The Logan Act has never been used. Barack Obama, in that meeting, there was discussion of the Logan Act in uh, in the January 5th meeting with Comey, Obama, and Biden. Comey brought up the Logan Act, something that has never been used. But more importantly, it's the get him fired. I believe the note saying get him fired is the smoking gun that ropes Barack Obama and Joe Biden into this whole mess. And it says to me that this is the wedge in the door to open up and figure out what's going on. I do not understand and maybe I'm just missing this, why a legitimate investigation into Donald Trump's staff would seek to get someone fired. The only goal I can see from that is to sabotage the Trump, the incoming administration, to disrupt the transfer of power. The Russia investigation served inadvert- on purpose or inadvertently. I don't want to, ass- I'm not going to go as far as to assert direct conspiracy. But because of the Russia collusion investigation, Donald Trump was unable to remove all of these former administration officials. He made it very difficult. In fact, when he sought to remove some of these people, he was accused over and over of obstruction of justice. What do we see here? Joe Biden used unmasking to presumably verify the identity of Michael Flynn. Don't know why. He was in the meeting. But a Barack Barack Obama's chief of staff on the 5th, unmasked the name of Michael Flynn, then had a meeting, then specifically brought up Flynn, brought up the Logan Act, and the FBI used that potentially to get him fired. Now, does that mean that Barack Obama was directing them to do this? I don't know. But I'll tell you, getting someone fired doesn't appear to be by the books. There's a lot more here. I'm sorry I can't get to everything. It is is a doozy of a story. We'll see how things play out. We've got some some breaking news. We'll see if it matters. Lindsey Graham to start hearings on Russia probe Flynn in June. The Hill reports that Graham said in a statement, the hearings will deal with the Justice Department's decision decision to drop the case against former White House National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. The warrant applications against the former Trump campaign advisor Carter Page and a former special counsel Robert Mueller should have been appointed. There's an ongoing criminal investigation into the origins of Russiagate. Currently, we know that there was FISA abuse. This means spying on people unjustly. FISA abuse has been going on for a long time. The story I showed you earlier, it's true. Barack Obama did spy a lot. It's really, really bad, even on journalists. Glenn Greenwald made a very, very important point on May 7th. I'd still like to understand what was improper about the incoming national security advisor of a newly elected administration calling his Russian counterpart to try to tamp down tensions in the weeks before he took office. I wonder how many Americans even know about the recently discovered FBI notes regarding their intentions before interviewing Flynn. Same question for the recently discovered FISA documents undermining which of the Russiagate conspiracy, uh, uh, much of the Russiagate conspiracies. These have been largely buried in the media. Obama may have ordered up a phony Russiagate scandal. Let me, let me read a little bit this for you. This is from, the tw- from May 11th. They say, it's now clear the Obama, Comey, FBI, and Justice Department never had anything more substantial than the laughable fiction of the Steele dossier to justify the investigation of the Trump campaign. Yet incessant leaks from that supposedly confidential probe wound up consuming the Trump administration's first months in office, followed by the Bob Mueller-led special counsel investigation that proved nearly the, quote, total witch hunt that President Trump dubbed it. Information released as the Justice Department dropped its charges against General Michael Flynn 
show that President Barack Obama in his final days played a key role in fanning the flames of phony scandal. Fully briefed on the Crossfire Hurricane investigation, he knew the FBI had come up with nothing despite months of work starting in July 2016. Yet on January 5th, 2017, Obama told top officials who'd be staying on in the new administration to keep crucial facts from Team Trump. It happened at an Oval Office meeting with Vice President Biden, John Brennan, Jim Clapper, National Security Advisor Susan Rice, as well as James Comey and Sally Yates. Quote, from a national security perspective, Rice's memo afterward put it, President Obama said he wants to be sure that as we engage with, in, with the incoming team, we are mindful to ascertain if there is any reason we cannot share information fully as it relates to Russia. And there it is. Obama had been giving guidance. He was moving on, but certain people were staying. It's really funny. People like to bring up this idea of the deep state. It's, this, this, this phrase, the deep state, is used by many on the left to accuse Trump supporters and Trump of believing in conspiracy theories. I don't care for the phrase, whatever it means, deep state, because it's used by the left to mean something else. But I can tell you, unelected officials that had worked with the Obama administration that were staying in their positions into the Trump administration did not have a favorable view of the president and were receiving guidance from Obama as to what they should be doing. We then learned uh, later on, more recently, that the FBI wanted to get Michael Flynn fired. Obama had warned Trump about Flynn for some reason. They didn't like the guy. And we, we, we learned recently that one of the reasons they claimed they didn't like Michael Flynn is that he viewed China as a larger threat than Russia, as if that should ultimately matter. It's a matter of opinion. But all that matters, as far as I can tell right now, is that, as Rand Paul puts it, Vice President Biden is guilty of using the government to go after a political opponent. Do we? I, I think it is, it is a bold statement from Senator Rand Paul. We don't have that direct evidence. But they didn't have the direct evidence, evidence against Donald Trump when it came to Russiagate and the incessant investigations and impeachment. In fact, in fact, when it came to impeachment, there was nothing but conjecture and opinion. Donald Trump said he wanted to look into what Joe Biden's son had been doing with Burisma and whether or not Joe Biden was involved in ending this prosecution. They argued that was proof. It wasn't proof of anything. You couldn't prove what Donald Trump was thinking or why he was doing it. And in fact, there were real questions being brought up about what was going on with this company, Burisma. Well, now we know that Joe Biden actually made a move. His name is on the list of people who unmasked Michael Flynn. That, by any reasonable standard, should be enough to question, why did the FBI want Michael Flynn fired? Why were they trying to use the Logan Act? Why in a meeting with Joe Biden and, and Barack Obama was the Logan Act brought up? Why did Barack Obama seek to unmask Flynn a week after he had already been in a meeting where they discussed Michael Flynn and the Logan Act? I don't know. Well, Lindsey Graham's going to have some hearings as an ongoing investigation. Many people have called for Barack Obama to be subpoenaed. And I will remind you for the 800 millionth time, I really can't break down the entirety of what's going on here. But I hope that's enough to help you understand that whatever this is, is substantially more serious than what Russiagate was. 53 transcripts released show that many of these people knew there was no evidence of Russian collusion. But every time one of these people would leak something fake to the press and the press would run with it, they would use that as justification, which is exactly what happened to Michael Flynn. And then because of the Flynn prosecution, that was justification to keep things going. And anything Donald Trump tried to do to stop it was seen as obstruction, which led ultimately to the Mueller probe, which ended in failure. Now that Donald Trump has successfully pushed back on all of these things and more information is coming out, I would say he beat Russiagate. He beat Ukraine gate slash impeachment. They made some weird allegations about China that fell apart right away. Now we're seeing Republicans sweep in these special elections. There may be a red wave coming in November. Donald Trump is now on the offensive. But there are a lot of Republicans who are dragging their feet because they like the power they have. Rand Paul not being one of them, potentially Lindsey Graham. A lot will come out in the coming months. Obamagate is, in my opinion, something we absolutely need to be paying attention to. Once we learned that Russiagate was nonsense, there should have been a hard question from everybody as to why we were duped for three years. Who were these people claiming they saw evidence? Why was Adam Schiff, a Democrat, House Intelligence Committee, saying he saw evidence? There was none. And why did it take until now to get these transcripts released to prove Obama knew, Biden knew, the Democrats were lying? Now I want to have these questions answered. And I'll put it this way. I entertained Russiagate. I absolutely did. And I covered all of these stories. And I said, I didn't think it was real, but we talked about it. Hey, maybe, maybe. Now that it's all over, 
I want to know why we all wasted our time. More importantly, I want to know why the FBI sought to get Michael Flynn fired. That's the first question, in my opinion. Everything that comes after that, who knows? Maybe it was somebody who just didn't like the guy. But Obama had a meeting about it. Really weird. Really, really weird. We'll see how it plays out. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. at youtube.com slash timcastnews, and I will see you all then.